Hey guys, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works, and I'm going to review with you today some changes that I made to our upcoming freestyle frame, the Smooth Operator. Smooth, so smooth. Um, I decided to embark on this adventure and design with you guys in my last video, uh, where you saw actually it was not the first design revision, that was actually the fourth design revision and I'm now working on Rev 5. Uh, so this thing has been through quite a bit. <laughs> I have been screwing and tinkering with this guy uh, every free minute that I have. I guess it's been about two weeks now or so, maybe more. Um, and so you can see where we have it now. Um, if you didn't see the last video, you might want to go and watch that and you can see what Rev 4 looked like. And you can also uh, you can also look into some of the uh, design elements. I'm not I'm not going to talk about all of the design elements of this thing. I'm just going to talk about the changes that I recently made. And that's to the front section here, and to the uh, the rear section where the FPV antenna connects in. Um, if you want to go hear about everything, you can go and look at that other video and, and see and learn about that. Um, so I'll get started. Um, what this is, this front end, is basically an adaptation of design elements that I took from a very popular frame of ours. It's a smaller frame. It's called the Droner, the massive Droner. Um, we have had really good success with that guy. Um, and so what I did, you can see here it is here, is the design element works such that you've got a arm brace or a spar that runs across the front arms like this okay spanning that distance and then you have these two vertical plates that run and connect connect to it and then run over alright and so that's doing a multitude of things it's it's essentially like a like a roll cage like a crash cage um, it also provides structural support in crashes for the front arms and it provides a location to mount your camera um, it gives you a lot oops it gives you a lot of uh, options with the camera because you can slide it back and forth um, and you can basically fit in this scenario any camera you can find on the market as long as it's a micro cam and it provides I would venture to guess probably some of the best camera protection really of any frame on the market okay so that's part of why I went with this design um, so uh, I'll discuss it I'll go ahead and, and discuss some of the elements of this um, I had to scale up the various components to accommodate a heavier machine, you know. So that's a this guy is a three inch, pretty pretty light, and then this guy's a five inch. So I had to really beef up this front spar. This is a five millimeter thick material, and I had to change the geometry uh, to account for where the stress risers are going to be. Um, I've you know, I've been crashing the droner now for a, a while, and I've broken the front bar a couple times, and I saw where it broke, and I kind of uh, added material in those locations. So that's how that worked. Um, this, this, uh, these vertical plates are connected in the front here by a locking system that works the exact same way as the droner. Okay. Um, then the, they run back over to some bulkheads. These bulkheads, let me, let me hide this so you can see. Okay. So these bulkheads here have, you know, have some, uh, some screws that run in and anchor the vertical plates to the main structure. So it anchors it to the top plate and to the bottom plate. Uh, these are TPU blocks here that are going to anchor this thing down. Okay, now um, the FPV camera, um, you know, it works the same way as the droner. You can slide it back and forth so you can adjust, you can make fine adjustments to the location of the camera. You can really get just about any angle here that you want. Um, you can see that you can really crank this thing up if you'd like and get some very extreme angles, or you can go completely flat and there's no issues. You're not going to get anything in the camera view. Um, oh, one thing I would like to mention is the camera sits on the same plane as the props. Right? So, 
since it's sitting on the same plane as the props, um, we have found that that's really advantageous to the way that the uh, the bird feels or looks in your goggles. Um, if you have the camera sitting up way high or or down low, you get sort of a you get an arc when it when it rolls. The 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 uh, FPV camera will will sort of move on an arc, and it gives a weird feeling in the in the camera view or the goggle view. So if you line it up with the the uh, plane of the props on the same level, uh, we just prefer it. So that we went that route. Um, now I'm going to talk about the HD camera, which is with freestyle. That's that's really the important part here. Is I mean essentially what you're doing is you're flying around an HD camera in 3D space to get cool video, and it all centers around that. So you really got to concentrate on that camera, how it's mounted, what kind of crash protection it has, uh, what sort of location it's sitting in reference to the props, in reference to the frame itself, um, what angle you can adjust it to, all of those things. So you can see the way that this thing is mounted is, is pretty simple. Okay, so I've, I've, <laughs> I've reduced the complexity uh, pretty substantially from Rev 4, but I'm still using the same design, what you, what you call it, philosophy. Okay, so we've got a bar here that allows you to adjust the angle. So if you change this out, this, this bar, you can get different angles in the camera. And we use that same design here, and we have been for well over a year, uh, with this guy, it's very successful. It works very well. Is this guy here? Okay. Uh, a lot. Of, some of you guys may have this product, but um, it works so well that I'm using it here. All right. Now it hinges there, and then it connects in the back to another hinge that uh, connects to, to this this TPU part. So. Why do we do it that way? Well, one, it's nice, it's easy to change the angle by just changing out the bar. The next part is that if something hits it, if you smash into the ground and you've got a force coming this direction, and which is typically where it's going to be coming from if, you, if you're if you you know flying around and you hit something, is that it's just going to pivot. Okay, so it's going to pivot here. And then this component, this TPU component, is going to flex backwards or to the side or, you know, any, any combination of movement. But uh, the point being that instead of it being a rigid structure, it now has some give to it. Okay, and so you can imagine that, you know, this is not, this is not complex physics here. This is pretty basic common sense is that if you hit this camera instead of it being rigidly mounted and not moving, you want it to move because you're going to impart less damage onto the camera. All right, So that should go a long ways to help to uh, protect this camera in crashes. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the front section, I think. Uh, everything is, is pretty basic, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I will mention that changing it like this Moving it from this, uh, from my previous design, over to this one. Let me show you guys the previous design. If you haven't seen the first video, you should probably go check it out. But moving it from this scenario, like this, with this big front section that's hinging on these components, over to this, save me about 10 grams. So we're about 10 grams lighter. So as you see it with everything here except for the GoPro mount, it's about, uh, what is it, 115 grams, something like that. And my previous design was turning out to be 125 grams by the time it was all said and done, so we're saving quite a bit of weight there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the rear section. There is another design addition that I made with this uh, with Rev 5, and I almost forgot to mention it and review it. It's the uh, the uh, pigtail connection for the XT60 uh, coming off of your speed controller. 
Okay, so how it's going to work is this is the speed controller. This is a 4-in-1 speed controller. The pads, on the particular way I have it mounted, the pads just so happen to be at the rear here. So you're going to solder the wires up. Then you're going to route the wires over around under here. Then up through this hole right here. And uh, what this is, is just a rubber grommet. Behind the grommet, okay. Here's the carbon fiber that's just holding the grommet in place. All right. Then you route your uh, your wires up, and then you just have your XT60 that's positioned perfectly right there in uh, in 3D space. Now, why did I go with that? Uh, I I did that because we've done it before. Uh, we did it with the with this frame, the 210R. You can see it here. This is how it works, and it has proven to be very successful. I like the way that it works, uh, and I haven't heard many complaints, so hopefully you guys do too. Um, it's nice because it, you know it's different than hard mounting the XT60 to the frame because when it, with that scenario, you have one option: you've got to plug it in right there. But with this, you can make these wires as long as you want. Okay, so you can make them super short, and you got the XT60 right up against here, or you can make them a little bit longer um, to account for the wires and the XT60 coming off of your battery. So that's it. There's another picture of it. Um, that's it. That's how that's going to work. All right, so the rear section of the craft, what I've done is I have a 3D printed... TPU component that you see here. I'll pull it up. All right, this is what it looks like. And it is friction mounted onto the rear standoffs. So there's two rear standoffs that go here. This is a pretty common design element. You know, I've seen a lot of frames that do this, but it works well. So why the hell not use it here? Um, now, what I had to do is position the exit for the antenna in such a way that the little pigtail here that comes off of these SMA connectors, like for instance on the uh, Unify Pro, the one that comes with it, it is not you know, interfering with anything. So the way it works is it's going under the flight controller. You can see it sort of fits under the flight controller. And this, inside this bay, behind this, this is a, just a cover plate, carbon fiber one millimeter cover plate. This box here that represents your VTX. All right, so uh, you'll just connect that right up to the VTX, and there you go. Nice and easy, plenty of space to do all of this, plenty of space to work with. Now, uh, what I have modeled up here is one of those uh, very popular, one of these uh, Axie stub antennas. Okay, here's the SMA threaded connection. And then this is an axi stub antenna. And with this sort of mounting scenario, this assembly is allowed to deviate. You can, when it crash, in a crash, this will sort of move around and, and uh, that way nothing breaks. Um, now, not everybody's going to run that. So we're going to hide that. And there is another mounting option for antenna. It looks like this. Okay, so this is a standard, you know, old school antenna, which people tend to run with the freestyle frames. And here is an optional stress relieving plate. Okay, keep in mind, it is optional. <laughs> you don't have to put it on. Um, Okay, the way that it works is you're going to, you know, mount it up with these two screws. It bolts to the bottom. Then you run zip ties to provide stress relief to your antenna. That works really well. We have used a similar design with a popular frame, another popular frame of ours. Um, this one here. Okay, let me get to the rear. 
All right, so you can see it here. This it's the same sort of mounting scenario, and I, this has proven to be, I mean, really bulletproof here. And so I've adapted it for this frame, but I've made it optional, so you don't have to use this if you don't want to. But it'll come in the kit. There you go. Now uh, I know there's people right now that are going, wait, you idiot, you forgot to uh, to have you know, some kind of mounting scenario for the UFL Axie. You know, the one that's got the, it's sort of a little bulb and then it has the long pigtail. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I didn't forget about it. Uh, there is going to be an, op this will be sold separate. It's an optional accessory that we're going to sell. And it'll have the little holder so you can press that, that antenna into there and you'll be so happy. All right, so we're going to do that. Now, um, I suppose that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, so there we have it. There are the uh, changes that I've made. I'll be interested to hear um, your comments and, and what you guys think about this. Um, I want everybody to know that the reason I'm doing this is I thought it would be uh, a pretty fun thing to do is to show you guys what goes on behind the scenes with these frames that everybody, you know, that you guys fly around. There is a lot of work that goes into these, um, a lot of time, a lot of thought, and um, now you, you get to be involved in it in some way and see and see what actually happens. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too long and boring. Bye bye.